Hello, welcome to our video. Today's video's topic is how to wire an encoder to a DM count module. This video was requested from the comments section, so don't be shy when having a question and ask it bravely. You can see a 40 pin front connector on the picture. To wire a TM count module we will have to attach the front connector into the module. The wires then have to be inserted into this front connector and tightened with the clamp. The direction of the arrows show whether the pin is an input or an output. If the arrow points toward the front connector it is an input, if it points out of the front connector then it means that pin is an output. If that pin is a ground pin, it has no direction sign. The number of the pins are under the tightening screw for each pin. All the pins that are not connected with an arrow, or a line, are not used by the DM count. Note, before we start the pin layout, that the module needs an external power supply through the external power supply inlet on the bottom of the front connector. This will be also shown in the video. Let's see the pin layout of the channel 0. The pin 1 has to be connected with the A signal of the encoder. This pin always has to be used. The pin 2 receives the B signal of our encoder. In most cases it is also necessary to have. The pin 3 is the N signal of the encoder. This is not necessary, even if your encoder has this signal you don't have to use it to work properly. This signal shows that a whole rotation has been made by the encoder. You can select some functions for it that has been presented in our previous video, but again, not necessary. Each channel has three digital inputs. These are on the pin 4, on 5 and 6 in this order. These inputs can have a technological function. The most common use I have encountered is to connect the drive ready output of the motor to a digital input, and that input is able to start the counting. Each channel also has two digital outputs. These output pins are the 7 and 8. The outputs can be controlled as a standard output but also can have a technological function and controlled by the module itself. On pin 9, we have our 24 volt encoder supply. We can supply our encoder from this pin if we want to. On pin 10, we have a ground for the encoder supply. To the front connector belongs a so-called potential bridge. When inserting this bridge on the holes in the yellow rectangle it acts as a jumper for both pins. If the jumpers are inserted in both holes the 24 volts is also accessible from pin 29, and there is also the ground on pin 30. It is very handy to use when we are using both channels of the module because in this case we can supply both of our encoders without pushing two wires in the same pin. The channel 1's S signal from the encoder connects to pin 11. Again, this has to be always used. The B signal for the channel 1 has to be connected to pin 12. In most cases it is also necessary to have the N signal that is not necessary but can be connected to pin 13, but can be useful in some scenarios. The three digital inputs connect to pin 14 to 15 and 16. These inputs can also have a technological functions. These functions are discussed in the video on the top right corner. The two digital outputs of the channel 1 are on the pin 17 and 18. These outputs can also have a technological function. The other pins, from 19 to 40 are not used by the DM count module. And eventually, the external power supplies 24 volt has to connect it to the pin 41 or 42 and the ground has to be connected to either pin 43 or 44. Note that these pins are not inserted to the front connector by default. This was our video on how to wire a two-channel DM count. If you found it useful, please subscribe and check out our other videos. Thank you, bye bye.